you're getting married and the cost of the wedding is spiraling out of control, you can really save on your flower girl dresses. I'm going to show you how you can really reduce the cost of the wedding on the flower girl dresses and save hundreds of dollars. So let's get started on how to make a flower girl dress. The fabrics I have used here are the ones that I got sent to by the lovely Amy for whom I'm making this and for the skirt I'm using this check and it's already got a facing on it which is quite nice but you don't have to have that. I'm using the gold for the kummerbund and then for the bodice I'm using this lovely creamy white dupion and it's also got a facing on it. The other materials I'm using is lots and lots of lace. Normally you would use a very lightweight cotton for your interlining and then a heavier cotton for the actual lining. And the lace I'm using is an eyelet lace and it's again cotton and I need about 10 meters of that. Then I've got some bias binding for the petticoat and also some glitzy stuff. And here I've cut out all the pieces, my kummerbund, my skirt uh, and my bodice. So let's get started with putting this dress together. I want to start here with a skirt. So you need to overlock the centre back. And then you mark where you're going to leave it open. That's about four inches from the top or 10 centimetres. So you just put a pin there to mark it. And then we're going to sew that together. We're also going to sew together the side seams as well. They are not overlocked yet. We overlock them together. So put the side seams on top of each other and sew those together. Seam allowance is one centimeter, as always. And you can see here how this iron-on facing is already there. I am not a great fan of this because it does make it stiff but on the other hand it doesn't crinkle as much and you don't need to put any other fabrics underneath it to give it body so I'm a bit undecided uh, definitely something though to check out when you are making a dress like that and here I am now sewing together the center back only to the point that I've marked where we leave the opening then you overlock the side seams and you iron them towards the uh, centre back. And then of course the centre back is going to be ironed apart. Then overlock the hem and turn it up 2.5 centimetres. And then you can iron this first and then pin it. And we're going to hand stitch it all the way around. So here's how to do the hand stitching. You fold over your hem and then you thread up a needle, put a knot in the end, secure the thread and then you're kind of picking up a tiny bit of your skirt and a little bit more of your hem. And then you keep pulling it like I've just done here so that you see nothing from the outside and then you do that all the way around. So an hour later, of course, when you decided that actually maybe you want to put some lace on there instead as well, you um, unpick all your hand stitching. This is exactly what I did. I did it and thought, ah, no. So here you can see it all opened up again. So you could put the lace straight on here. So I actually did that. So I pinned my lace too. And then when that is turned up, um, it'll just peep out underneath it and I think that is really really cute. Uh, I thought well, maybe uh, I need more layers of this lace and you stitch that on and then you could overlock that together. Obviously this is like um, an afterthought that I had. Iron it, guess what? <laughs> Pin it again and spend like another hour um, hand sewing this entire skirt. So that was fun. Anyway, uh, it's worth it when it looks really good afterwards. Now we're going to do the lining. Again, you leave the center back open, but we're sewing the seam together and then overlocking in one. So just go ahead and put your pins in and then also pin the side seam. Iron the seam to one side and the side seams towards the front. Now we're going to put the lace on. I have to say though, make absolutely sure 
that your skirt has been shortened for the lining by about four centimeters so it doesn't necessarily show so now i'm going to use this fantastic gather foot so you need to take your um, part off the actual machine and then put your gather foot over the side and plonk it on there and i have to say that my gather foot did this beautifully and then broke when I was doing the petticoat and I actually had to do everything by hand and with an overlocker. So um, that was very gutting and I will certainly get another one of these because as you will see now, it's absolutely so, so easy. You're putting the eyelet lace with the wrong side facing down onto the right side of the skirt, right? and then you can also adjust here with a little screw how much you want it to gather in so i always get like loads of lace like i said i got like 10 meters just to make sure because no way did i want to run out then you just let the um lace run through the top and look it gathers it and at the same time sews it to the skirt it's just genius so if you like making skirts like that please get yourself one of those and you'll never look back and you'll never think, oh no, I have to gather all this stuff. Just look at that machine go. It's just like absolutely brilliant. And this is again a faff attachment and it's 45 uh, pounds, I think it was. So it's expensive. Anyway, you overlock afterwards and you're getting this beautiful finished hem. So much nicer than just turning it in and in. And now you can see it's the wrong side of the skirt and then the right side of the lace going down. And because I don't want even this to show, I'm putting over a ribbon. So when she lifts her little skirt, we can see the ribbon as well, which is gorgeous. These little touches really make a dress, I think, but of course they take extra time and you don't really have to do it. You could just top stitch it down and it'd be just as nice. Anyway, I'm just putting the bias binding just over my stitching line and then really stitch it close to the edge and the end is just tucked in and then you go over it it's easy but i'll tell you what boy that skirt i just did not even want to put it in the post i could have just left that on the dummy and looked at it for a while move it over to the other side and then go over this and the other thing is no flower girl ever will have skirts like that. Nothing you can buy will look like this. Um, then give it a really good press. Also press down a little bit, you know, with a bit of steam, your um, gathered lace. And just look at that. How cool is that? Now, there's another video showing you how to do the net petticoat. On this one, the petticoat magically has just appeared on my skirt and I tell you what, that petticoat was a labor of love as well. Make sure that whatever you do, you have the petticoat on before you sew the skirts together. Um, the nice thing is if the height is not quite right, you can adjust that real easy. You could just um, take it off the top to make it fit. So if you have made a whoopsie, in your calculation with the um, skirt, underskirt and the lace that you're using, then you can do that. Now we're going to put right sides together the opening of both skirts and we're going to sew them in to the end of the opening. And you can just put that really flat and sew it in. Pin the other side as well. When I actually do this, I always just pin one side and I sew down one side because the pins get in the way and then I do the other side. So you want to go down one centimeter seam allowance, make sure it's all flat. It's really easy to catch something at the bottom there. So you could just stop a little bit higher. Okay. You don't need to go all the way. Now I've caught something there and I had to open it back up. That's why it wasn't going all the way down. Then on the other side, you make sure it's flat underneath it and then you sew back up. And to make sure that this looks really, really pristine, we're also going to understitch it. And that means that the seam allowance is going to be stitched down. So seam allowance folded towards the lining and then we just stitch close to the edge down. And we do that both sides and that gives you the most beautiful skirt. Absolutely gorgeous.
Next, we're going to pin together the top and at that point you can also check the length. So if it's not quite right, make sure that it sits just like that and pull it up a bit if it doesn't, okay? Then we're going to put our gather threads into the top. That means it's the longest thread available on your sewing machine and we're putting them together. Now, you can see here that my lining seems to be a bit bigger, so don't despair. We're going to gather this anyway, just put it into little pleats. Um, because fabric reacts differently and there's no point uh, having hardship here, just go. <laughs> and then the next stitch goes right next to it with the presser foot lining up with the initial first row. Now we're going to make the bodice and you've got your silk and your interlining and your lining. Now, in my case, of course, this interlining I don't need to use because it's already interfaced. But you would do this step now. You would take the wrong side of whatever you've got and then you place your interlining over the top and then you work it as one to make it nice and stiff. And you can put just some pins around it, the armhole and stuff to hold it in place so it doesn't move and then you just treat it as one fabric. Now in my case, I did not have to do that because it's interfaced already. So I'm going to take off my interlining then. I'm going to do my dart. So where you snip the dart and marked it as shown on the pattern, you're going to put your lower pin. Then just fold it up straight and you can see the straightness here. And one centimeter below the armhole is where your dart ends. And you want to put a, what is it, horizontal pin in. Pin the lining, open it out a bit, because honestly, because you have a different uh, left and right side, you might get it wrong. So put the right sides like that together and then pin your dart. And I tell you, I have done it many times when I didn't want to do this and I just wore autopilot on the machine. And then I had to undo the dart um, on my lining and you want to have a very slim and slender dart to the top. Uh, you could almost curve it inward. This, uh, I did it a bit outward there, that's not perfect, but it's good enough, you will see. The key is that the dart totally disappears into the fabric. If you have a nose up at the top, it's not slim enough. So iron the dart on the lining towards the side seam and the dart on the Dupion silk towards the center and that way it's really nice and flat and you can see that here. Next step is to put a uh, facing, that's a strip of silk, just any old strip, honestly just cut yourself a strip. Um, I will add that to the pattern where people are always confused. It's like four centimeters or five centimeters wide and you fold in the edge and then you stitch that down. Uh, close to the edge and that will give uh, the inside the stability it needs for when we sew on the buttons because they're going to go onto that part. If you have a label like I do here and when I do things for actual people I put my Frogs and Frolics label in. It should now say made in Los Angeles shouldn't it? Bespoke design made in Los Angeles but I still use them because I've got so many left. Um, I don't sell these commercially anymore. Now we're going to put on the ruler loops. We are going to just use the top and the lower one because I changed the measurement slightly and you know there's another uh, video that shows you how to adapt the pattern. You want to make sure that the seam is facing up so that when they are turned over properly the seam is not showing. So seam up when you pin it on. If you're not sure how to make a ruler loop, then you can watch my ruler loop video on the sewing workshop. And now I divide by three. And then here I'm going to put my ruler loop around that. There we go, I'll do that at the top. And then you want to stitch them in. Now the last thing you want is a ruler loop slipping out because the stitches with which you sew it together might be big enough to let them slip. So what you want to do is sew backwards and forwards over them with a relatively small stitch so that they cannot go anywhere 
um, is a disaster when they come out. So now you can see when you fold them over, none of the seams show and it's just beautiful. And it's actually not hard to do. It just takes a bit of practice. Next, we're going to close our shoulder seams. Bit different to my initial videos. I think this is actually easier. I don't know why I did it the other way all those years. It's fine really either way, but I want to show you this because I think it's easier. So shoulder seams and you also do this on the lining of course then we iron apart the seams obviously give it a good press from the outside as well and now magic happens we're going to put our lining right sides down onto the bodice and we are going to close the armhole the neckline and the center back and we can do that in one go so i think that's quite a nice technique to do this. You also could use stay tape around the armhole because this was already all interfaced. I did not need to do that. That is not going to go anywhere, but you could of course do that, especially if you say, well, to be honest, I'm just using my Dupion silk and a lightweight lining because I live in Florida and it's so hot and these are substantial dresses. They're going to be warm. So in that case, you need to um, put some stay tape around the edges. Otherwise it will stretch, but here it was necessary. So you go all the way around the neckline, keep to the same seam allowance. You can of course just do foot width if that's more comfortable for you. That's just a couple of millimeters difference. It doesn't make any difference on the fit. Now make sure you don't catch your ruler loop. You can feel that actually. Um, sometimes it helps to just like move it out of the way when you get to the corner. I've done so many hundreds of these flower girl dresses, quite literally, honestly, it's not exaggerated. Um, I, I just know where it is. <laughs> I used to sell these dresses on Amazon by the bucket load um, in the summer. And I tell you that I'm just gone on autopilot. Um, used to throw them together. But the good news is you can make the same sort of standard, really, really nice flower girl dress with a commercially tested pattern that really, really works. So now we're going to snip the armholes just so that we have no tension here. You can also cut back the shoulder seams You want it as flat as possible. Now we're going to understitch. You won't get very far, but as far as you can go, you should go. So we're going to have the seam allowance facing um, the lining and then we stitch close to the seam line here. I'm starting at the center back. I think this is here. Just the key to all your understitching is to really pull the fabric apart. If you are sewing in like loosely, like so it's almost like a little pleat, well, it's not going to do you any favors. You might as well not bother and iron it really well. All understitched, I can now pull through the back. So I go with my fingers to the front shoulder, grab one corner of the back and pull it through. And do the same on the other side, of course. So now I just need to do my ironing. Iron from the wrong side, the inside, the lining side. And this again, this takes quite a long time. I cannot believe that some people would finish an item without having pressed it. <laughs> it's like, you need to press all the time in between and that will give you such good results. So people get out your iron. It really is um, vital absolutely vital so everything fits beautiful now we can close the side seam and we can do that in one go so you grab your lining and then you fold it open pin it and we're going to sew it all the way down one centimeter seam allowance just keep your seam allowance here doesn't really matter um, the underarm seam which direction that goes that seam actually now we're going to iron the seam allowances apart 
And then you also want to snip right at the top a little bit so you release any tension. I'm not doing that here, um, or I haven't filmed it, I always do it. You snip either side of the seam allowance just so it's nice and smooth. It's smooth here anyway, so, but just look at that. Isn't that a most gorgeous bodice already? Now we're going to put the skirt onto the top. You're going to put a vertical pin in so that can't go anywhere and then you're going to find the side seam of the outside and put that on the side seam of your skirt but that's how I do it you don't have to do it like that you can just pre-gather it a little bit first and then put it on but basically you now pull your gather threads um, only the one side, the underside, uh, and then when it fits really nicely, you put the thread round the pin in a figure of eight and distribute your uh, gathers really well, and then they're pinned to the entire bodice. Um, I don't overpin this, I tend to do a lot of rearranging under the sewing machine anyway. And now we're going to sew this in and it's so easy to catch something, so really check underneath it all the time. Make sure that you're not catching anything. Rearrange your gathers so it looks like really cool. And then, this is a little industry trick, you fold over the lining and you stitch as far as you can go. Now, to be honest, I used to have this employee called Fast Alison. She was just unbelievable. And she used to sew this together. I'm just putting dart on dart here. That's as far as I go. But she used to do it so there was like three centimeters left open in the middle. So if you are a really experienced sewer, you can do that. But me coming from the couture line, I actually am um, used to doing a lot of hand stitching. So I didn't do that. And I always marveled. She used to go done. <laughs> she was fantastic. So I'm just going to push this together right to the darts. If you can go further, okay, but I'm just so likely to just stretch it or catch something, so I'm just stopping there. And then I cut back the corner because that's flatter. And then all I have to do is pull this over and look, you're getting a beautiful finish. And of course, I do like the fact I don't have to hand stitch there and that the corner is all really nicely in. Next, I'm going to attach the lining. So make sure that it's not too tight. That's worse than too loose. And you put the pins so that it's just over your stitching line. And then I'm going to hand stitch this too. So get your needle in there so that you can hide the knot so the knot is going to disappear to the inside, push it in there, and then tunnel through the lining and pick up a little bit of the skirt. Actually, you can pick quite a bit up because it's not going to show. It's very, very thick. And I do that all the way along. Tunnel, pick up, there you go. So now it's almost done. Fantastic, I can get out all those nasty gather threads. Just pull all your threads out so it's nice and neat and clean. Final stages, make sure that you measure across the chest and make sure you compare that with the actual measurements so that if you have to be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, the beauty of doing ruler loop buttons is that you can have a little bit of movement in there which is great if you're making it say for a grandchild that lives in Florida and you're all the way over in like say um, California <laughs> like me then that's brilliant so you put the top button on first and mine are all the way over there almost off my little um, placket on the inside which is not my intention but I'm just on it so it gives that little support to the button and then I do the bottom button the one that's lowest, you want to just go through quite a few times so nothing gets ripped off and then secure your thread. 
And there we go, beautiful buttons. I used contrast cover buttons, of course, um, but you can use any other button. Pearly ones are good as well. This is the Kuma Bund. There's a separate video for that. And we're just stitching the Kuma Bund straight onto the side seam. And I don't think I showed that on the other video either. So now we're going to sew in the seam to attach the Kuma Bund. You don't go all the way down, you start at the top and you only go, well, just to the end of the bodice and it needs to be exact match to the color of your kumabund, otherwise that might show. But you can see here, if you pull it apart, it actually won't show. So this is the end, this is the entire dress. Of course, you can check out the other videos which show you how to amend the pattern, how to do the kumabund, how to do the petticoat and just create that dream dress.